Welcome to the Coach Ken Erickson Show, our first show of the 2016 season, and we are looking forward to the team getting on the field in competition this Friday. Big tournament coming up. Coach, we've got a lot to get to. Let's start with this weekend. You bring in Michigan and Florida. They both won 60 games last year. Virginia Tech, Illinois State, South Carolina in the opener on Friday. You're going to learn a lot about your team pretty quick this weekend. Yeah, you know, some people uh, would think the schedule maker is a jokester, you know, but uh, I, I think it's phenomenal. You're going to have a sellout all three days, you know, what goes on, and, and you're going to have uh, great crowds uh, watching great softball, um, six teams that play the game at a very, very high level. And anytime you can bring in the, the national champion and the defending, or rather the runner-up, um, to the national championship is going, to, is going to bode well for excitement, but we are going to find out a lot, um, not not just of how we react to the crowds, but also the competition and you know how fast that our kids can make those adjustments uh, because there's no there's no let up on, on all of the teams we play. We'll have video play by play from that tournament Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but get out there if you can. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we'll have the season preview for the team. Find out about some new coaches, some new players and some key returnees. Then right back here with more of the Coach Ken Erickson show. Looking for an individual or family health care plan or maybe a dental policy? Look no further than the Tampa Florida Blue Centers in West Shore, Carrollwood, and Pinellas Park. For more information, go to floridablue.com or call the number on the screen. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. The work begins long before they take the field. The 2016 USF softball team is ready for another season with clear goals in mind. The Bulls NCAA tournament experience is well documented, but here at the stadium there is one notable exception up on the wall. There's no 2015. As the new season begins, the Bulls are determined to make their way back to postseason play. The ultimate dream is to get to Oklahoma City, and the ultimate dream is to win, you know, in Oklahoma City and win the national championship. And along the way, we're going to hit steps of success. Now on the coaching staff, USA women's national softball team member Jessica Moore and former Maryland assistant Tommy Santiago. I'm excited though. We've been working hard and we've been gelling really well with them and we all really like them and I think they're helping us get to where we need to be. We have some young enthusiasm right now that's kind of here for the first time and new blood type of stuff and maybe implemented a few things in the infield that's a little bit different and uh, I think some of the languages are now coming back on, on board with everybody and but it seems that uh, it's been a great transition. There is transition in the circle as well, where the Bulls will depend on a mixture of proven returnees and new talent. You have experience coming in, in, in Emily Gaitan, you know, who transferred from Mississippi. She's thrown against some pretty good stuff over the last couple of years. Erica Nunn's thrown against the best competition in the country as a senior. Two freshmen right now that uh, are, are showing very well, and Cheyenne Eggins, a hard thrower from Ohio, and Sammy Worrell, who spins the heck out of it, you know. And then, you know, watch out for Susan Wysocki, you know, a young lady that's been with us three years. She's a second-year eligible player right now, but she's one of the hardest truckers going 69, 70 miles an hour, and uh, I look for some great things for all of them. It'll be an adjustment for the new pitchers and for the catcher that has to manage the staff. I'm not someone who's going to throw 70 miles an hour, but I'm definitely going to spin the ball and just try and keep hitters off balance with um, changing up speeds. I'm coming into a bunch of pitchers I've never really caught before, but we're doing a really good job at practicing hard with our pit new pitching coach coming in and everything. So we've done a really great job adjusting and coming up with a new plan, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. For the Bulls, the work schedule is relentless, but the atmosphere around the team is new. 
I'd say this team is completely different than any of the teams I've played on before because here we have a bunch of girls that everyone has the same motives. This is the first time we're in the weight room. People are backing each other up. And we've always had team support and team morale and everything going on. But this year, it's like we're a unit. Like we are one team rather than a bunch of individuals. I couldn't ask for better teammates. We push each other. It's so positive here. And it's it's just great to be a bull, honestly. We have an opportunity this year to, once again, set a precedent you know, throughout college softball and how you approach the game. I believe that this group led by the seniors, uh, understand that it's a collective, collegial group that needs to stay together to win. The Bulls season begins February 12th and features numerous nationally ranked opponents, a challenging schedule for a team determined to continue the run of success the program has become known for. For Bulls Cast, I'm Jim Lauk. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. What am I doing in this royal carriage? I summoned it with YP, the best local app ever, with Uber built right in. Conroy, take me to the haberdashery. That's not my name, sir. <laughs> sir. How do I get away with this? I bought tickets directly from the YP app, and with Fandango built right in, I go right to my primo seats with this obscene bucket of corn. Hot. <laughs> Download the YP app. Do it now. Back at the Coach Ken Erickson show, we had a chance to see in that preview a little bit on the coaching staff changes. You've really made a lot of changes from the end of last year. What led to that? Well, you know, first of all, we had uh, Monica Triner, who's been with us forever, you know, and decided to, to make a career change. And, and uh, she said she wanted to go fishing. I can't blame her. I mean, this, this job is, gets crazy as it goes. And, and so I uh, speak to Mo quite often, and uh, actually the first day of practice this year, she texted me and said, how you doing? You know, are you enjoying the practice? And I was like, absolutely. She sent me a picture of, I think she was into some type of Wahoo or something out in the Gulf of Mexico. But, you know, we're, we're going to miss the, the coaches that we've had in the past. And, but we have an opportunity right now to, to get somebody like a Jessica Moore, who is a phenomenal pitching coach and a great pitcher in her own right, and then Tommy Santiago who's been around for years in the college game. He was at the Florida State, he was at University of Maryland, St. John's University, and did such a fabulous job in the recruiting and the teaching at those schools that after he was there, those teams went and made great runs in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, to have those two people on board is a very dynamic situation for us. And, uh, you know, I think we're adapting very, very well. How different is it for your pitching staff now? Because you have some new faces, some returnees, but you have as odd as it sounds, some veteran newcomers coming in. Yeah, we do. Emily Gaitan, who uh, transferred to us uh, from the University of Mississippi. She's from Tampa, uh, has a lot of experience in Division One ball. So it's nice that you're getting uh, that type of player. It's almost like the money ball situation where you're, you already know what they can do in college, you know. And so Emily, who has a, a, an array of pitches that, that bodes well for any diversity with any pit, pitching staff, helps us out because you got some power pitching in Susan Wysocki and then a power pitcher in Cheyenne Higgins, and then you've got a crafty veteran pitcher in, in Erica Nunn. So, you know, we feel very, very good about uh, the diversity of the staff, uh, but we feel very, very good also about you've got a junior, senior spread out with a couple of freshmen too. And you will ask them to pitch in all parts of the game against all different kind of matchups. Is that a hard concept when you're recruiting and you say, you know, hey, we do it a little bit different here. We may not ask you to go out and give us the seven innings. Is that is that a little different when you first bring that up? You know, since I took over as a head coach back in the, the mid 90s, it's, my philosophy has always been more of a National League type of mentality as a coach, as a manager of the pitching staff and catching game and found out it's very successful because you don't have to have sometimes somebody that throws at 70, 72 miles an hour to win. Um, if you can show different looks and different innings and different situations. And as you know, you've been around me long enough to know, is I'll make a pitching change with three balls, two strikes, bases loaded, two outs. And it doesn't matter because we're trying to win that pitch, that, that inning, you know, that specific pitch. 
and, and our kids do buy into that, you know, and they actually cherish that type of situation, that are collegial situation. And I think the people that buy into a collegial pitching staff actually do better amongst the team as it gets down towards the end of the season. And I'm not going to lie to you either. I mean, we're going we're gonna to ride a hot hand when we have to ride a hot hand. But, you know, in the past, and, and you go back to the Lindsey Richardson, Sam Griner, Sarah Nevins combination, and Monica Trana, Jennifer Thompson, Christina Pacone combination. So you've, you've got a whole different array of opportunities. And the way the rules are written and so forth, you know, if we start a game with five pitches, we're actually pitching six because of the substitution rules. So, you know, I think we're in very, very good shape, uh, very diversified, and you're right. I won't hesitate at any time to throw anybody in any situation. If you come out this weekend, you will see some newcomers amongst the position players, but you'll also see some returnees, and I guess you have to start with Leanne Spivey, who will handle the bulk of the catching, I presume, and obviously one of the top hitters as well. You know, she will. She, she's she got an opportunity to, to stay as healthy as she can. Um, uh, because of Mia Fung. And so by having Mia Fung, uh, who is seasoned now, a year, and she's a great catcher in her own right, and she'll be the heir apparent to what Leanne has provided us in the last four years. But, but Spivey is a solid situation, behind the plate and at the plate, and it's very rare that you have catchers that can hit for power, power and, and hit for average at the same time, plus run, because both Spivey and Fung can run. So, but Leanne is a, is a leader behind the plate. Um, she's got a great demeanor for the game, loves to have fun. Her biggest challenge, and she's willing to accept it this year, which is great, is that she does have a pitching staff that's pretty deep. So she's got to learn five, six different pitchers, you know, that might might happen in one inning. So um, she, and hopefully it doesn't, okay, but, but we're prepared for it. But Spivey's really good that way. Fung is doing a great job. And then you have another person in Morgan Gross right now who does a great job in, in that position to give everybody a break if they need it. Will this team be as aggressive on the base pass as the 2015 team was? I think more. I think it's, it's easy to say that we'll be more aggressive because we're a year older with the same type of speed that we had. Um, and I think that they're, they understand what the run and hit game is, the hit and run game, the, the put the ball in play. And you don't have to be a big swinger all the time, but it's about causing uh, havoc on the base paths. And with people like Kristen Wyckoff, uh, Aston Donovan, Julie Weber, Mia Fung, um, Leanne Spivey, Lauren Evans can run. So you've got some speed out there, and uh, if you can make the defense move laterally and put the ball in play, I think you have a great opportunity. We've asked a couple of players this as well. It was a little bit unusual last spring not going to the NCAA tournament. This program has made a habit out of it. Missing it last year, how has that motivated the team? Well, uh, you know, and I, I can only speak for them by watching what they did in the summer and watching what they did in the fall. Um, and, and if that's any indication, I think we're back on track. We, we missed it by the slightest of margins. And um, sometimes uh, the popular team that gets a little bit hot at the end has a tendency to sneak above people's body of work. And that's okay. We get that. But we can't leave it up to the voters. We can't leave it up to that. We've got to do things early right on to solidify our position. I didn't like the downtime. Okay, I didn't like the downtime at all. I made it known that I didn't like the downtime. Uh, my wife almost kicked me out of the house uh, in the two weeks of the postseason after the, the last game. Um, you know, I got real crabby, but at the same time, it motivated me to get back into the office and, and pick apart and, and start fresh of what we needed to do going into the season. And changes needed to be made personnel-wise and changes need to be made on philosophy-wise. And if you don't continue to progress, you know, you're, you're going to get left behind. But I feel like we're... We're on par to where we want to be again. I feel very aggressive about what's going to go on. And uh, I really look forward to uh, not just the beginning of the year, but I really look forward to the middle of the year when we have established what we're going to do. What are the philosophical changes that you had to wrestle with? You, you can't stay in a, a mindset that the lineup is going to be a, a one set lineup you know, throughout a whole year. You've got to kind of change the philosophy of your approaches. and. Um, you know, sometimes a ball and play philosophy is good, and sometimes a power play is good, and sometimes a defense and uh, a pitching philosophy is good. And if you, if you stay with that as one philosophy through the whole year, I think you can limit yourself. So I think you have to be adaptable. And so what we've done this year is make sure that our team is feeling comfortable being uncomfortable in every situation and being prepared for that. Uh, we've worked a lot harder in the infield than we have before. We're in different uh, defensive sets, probably five or six defensive sets right now in one ball game instead of just one solid deal. So uh, I think the diversification has injected a lot of enthusiasm in the veteran infielders. 
Uh, I think our philosophy of aggressiveness uh, offensively has injected a lot of enthusiasm amongst the veterans. So um, I'm curious to see how it plays out. What do you need to see this weekend to make you sit back and say, all right, we're on the right track? Uh, competitiveness. I really would like to see this. this it's a very youth-laden team, in all honesty. I'd like to see them be competitive. I'd like to th see them stay within what our framework is and not worry about who's across the field in the other dugout, who's wearing a different color uniform in their faces. It doesn't matter. It's, it's about playing a different opponent, and it's also about playing the game the right way. So if we can focus on the little things of just the game itself, I think we'll be okay. But I really want to see them compete against the game and the things that are presented above them. And if we can do that, you know, I think we can cut out all the distractions that have a tendency to sneak in. Coach, thanks. Good luck this weekend. We'll take all we can get. Bulls will start on Friday, and our broadcast time will be 2.15 for USF versus South Carolina. Bulls will play five times over the weekend. We'll have three of the games right here on GoUSFBulls.com. Thanks for joining us. Back again soon with another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show. <laughs> <laughs>